So here we are, George, over Stanwick at Elson's, and uh, we've been talking, obviously, you know, about bits and pieces and uh, your time on Wassing. So, do you want to sort of tell us how you sort of went about it, your approach, and did you have any preconceptions before you went on there? And yeah, you yeah. Shifted, basically. Yeah. Well, to be fair with you, mate, it really came about whilst I was still fishing Burfield. Right. Um, and it, I'd had my name down on the waiting list um, for quite a long time, actually, like since I was fishing the, the Manor Farm in Essex. And obviously I ended up on Burfield eventually. And um, it's just sort of come about, like the ticket came up and I was still sort of early days into my Burfield campaign and stuff. And yeah, um, got a chance to miss probably. Yeah, pretty much mate. And you know, I thought at the time, you know, I can slip off to that one, have a, have a quick go for that and, and perhaps come back to Burfield. Um, and as it turned out, I started on there in around about late October, November. Um, and it went quite well, really. Um, you know, I sort of left Burfield for, for a little while, got on there. It was all a bit like it is now, really, mate. The weather was all starting to sort of get autumn, autumn -y and, and stuff like that. And, and, you know, I nicked one quite quickly. Um, but at first it, it did actually take me quite a while to, yeah. to sort of figure it out you know it's like i was fishing it was allowed bait boats i know you yeah. don't like the old bait <laughs> boats and stuff but you was allowed them and to be fair the makeup of that lake is very egg boxy like you right. can literally be so on a tiny spot some mouths exactly that it. so you can literally be on a three foot hump and you know three four foot to the left you're in sort of 17 yeah, so feet of water bang on, basically bang on so I started on there and you know you'd see them really regularly obviously it quietened off a lot as it gets colder you know you get a lot of people well, I'm gonna do the winter blah 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 and they all sort of drift away the don't they the usual thing and uh, funny enough it was pretty much me and Terry Hearn on there at the time and he was clubbing them like he always yeah. does and uh, you know I was seeing them moving regularly and all that but you couldn't get amongst them and I'll be honest it took me a while to figure out that even though it was cold they wanted it in the shallow water I was fishing in the deeper bits you know what's the sort of difference between variation in depth well like I say I mean you could be on three foot I mean it there's a big plateau in one particular area which is where I eventually ended up catching oh. the parrot from and um you know, it, it can be anything from about 18 inches to, if memory served me right, I mean, it's been three or four years now, but what I remember, it was like sort of 12, 13s, 14s, maybe a bit deeper, yeah. you know, so it was, it was quite a big sort of variation yeah. in depth, but yeah. they just didn't seem to be up for it in the deeper water. You think the upper layers were warmer at that time with the temperature dropping? For sure, frosty yeah. But having said that, I mean, I was on there basically through the winter, done the whole winter on there. We had a bit of a period where it froze and we couldn't fish for two, three weeks. Um, and then I was sort of pretty much done by May when it was just starting to warm up. So I never see the sort of summer in there, like, you know. Um, but yeah obviously the, the water temperature was was warmer in the upper layers and and they spent a lot more time in the upper layers had i have fished a summer possibly you know the deeper water might have come into play yeah. or or what have you but at that time mate like i say it took me a little little bit of time like quite a few nights burn to to realize you know i'm on them but i'm not getting bites yeah. but they want it in the shallower water do you think um, that was high up in the water and not deep water sort of thing like up in the layer still yeah yeah, I do. Yeah, I think they so spent... that's why he wasn't getting bites. Exactly that, there. yeah, exactly that. So I just think they spent a lot more of their time probably around the sort of margins of the islands and stuff. But even though I was fishing up to the margins of the islands, I was choosing the deeper bits as opposed to three, four foot. Which most know, anglers would do. Which most anglers would do. And obviously not getting the bites and sitting there pulling out what air I had left, like trying to figure it out. But eventually I did figure it out and, um, and then the bites started coming mate and to be fair once you sort of get that that sort of figured out it's not a hard lake you know there, there's plenty of carp in there it's just getting a key to unlock it isn't it exactly right mate and and literally i was you know it wasn't uncommon to like have you know 
five, six, seven, eight, nine fish a, a session, yeah. mate, you know. Um, and it, it went well, mate. Um, we were sort of starting to get amongst them. Um, not massive ones, you know, there's a lot of smaller stuff yeah. in, but really nice lookers, you know, some nice scaly ones in there, a lot of smaller commons and stuff like that. Um, you know, using a fair bit of bait, not nothing too much, but you know, got through a bit of the bait. Um, so what, uh, what was the stocking levels then, George, at that time? Was it sort of heavily stocked? Or? Yeah, I think it was quite a heavily stocked. I mean, don't quote me, there'll probably be people going, nah, I ain't got that many in it, but you know, I mean, I would say there was probably a good couple of hundred carp in there. That's a fair old head of fish. That's a fair old head of fish. It wasn't a massive pit yeah. either. Um, I mean, what, what was it? seven eight acres i suppose not not, not yeah. very big like um but yeah yeah so managed to get amongst a few and you know eventually as, as the sort of weather started to warm up we was sort of into march by now and uh i was literally you know was doing a fair bit of time because i'd had a i'd had an ear operation funny enough and uh, i had a bit of time off like as Bit of recovery time off from work so i've done as much as i could um, at the time there wasn't a time limit on there but you could only spend 48 hours in a swim right. before you had to move um to, you could just move to another yeah. swim which was good because you could prime other areas and and sort of move over and to be fair in the end it actually worked out for the best because i probably wouldn't have caught her had that yeah. not happened at the time like and um, like I say I was getting amongst quite a few of them and then you know there, there's a couple of swims on there from what I remember one was called the woods and one was called the end beat and they controlled a lot of the shallow water like to the left of them two swims you had a big massive plateau um, and that was the shallowest part of the lake I mean like I say it went anything from about 18 inches all the way down like to, to the deeper bits like you know and um, I'd nicked quite a few fish there and then I had that floppy tail linear yeah I know um, 42 odd pound cracking carp like really you know to be fair probably the better looking one out of the two mm. to be honest but that, that was a, a nice capture to have that right you know if I would have caught the parrot, I would have probably been off. So to have that one as well bonus. was almost like a bonus, you know. Um, and like I say, so I managed to nick that one and uh, and then just sort of fishing around the pond and, and, and catching carp. And it didn't really feel that close to her, to be fair. I think I'd see her a couple of times, like, um, but didn't really feel that, that close. And it was just more of a case of, you know, fish catch fish catch and hopefully she'll come along like you know and then then we got to you know pretty much the beginning of may and i always have well don't so much do it now because of burfield the logistics of burfield are a little bit different in like the times you want off and, and to, to fish for that particular carp like the burfield common but at that time i would book a lot of time off from work around your sort of spring window your may like so yeah. you know i'd had a couple of weeks off coming up and stuff like that prime time really prime time exactly right and to be fair everybody around the pond was catching you know people were saying you know i'd seen i think terry Ern had caught her he caught her in the, the february storms if i if i remember what rightly like wicked capture fair play to him but um to be fair it was quite nice to have him off there <laughs> <Not bad. laughs> you know i mean you know Terry Terry and he, I mean I don't know him that well but you know you've only got to look at what he's caught yeah. and, and he's a threat isn't Unless he? It's a competition so, isn't it? Exactly right mate. Um, so like I say we were sort of pretty much into May and uh, there's a couple of lads on there on it. Um, little, I say little, it's not that little John, Catchy and Craig Runham I think his name is but they was both on it you know you could tell they was they was on the ball like right? and got in tune that, the place. exactly they'd be up in the mornings and you know they was wanting the same swims as, as we would want or I would want you know and um, funny enough that John was in the swim which I ended up catching her from which was the NB which controlled this sort of plateau type area yeah. like you know and uh, funny enough I was fishing in a different swim just around the lake I can't remember what it was called but I saw a show and uh, I was like oh, I'd done a night in there but I knew John was moving or had to go that particular day like so 
it was you couldn't bucket it you, you literally had to be around there with your kit to claim the swim and it was like what do i do do i stay in this swim or do i move around there the weather's going to get a bit warmer sort of thing you know the area that i was in was a bit of a deeper wall although i wasn't fishing mega deep spots it was deeper than where i wanted to go sort of thing so i bit the bullet and i thought no i'm moving around there in the morning so literally four o'clock in the morning i'm up set the alarm clock kit in the van you could drive around to your swims there bunged all the kit in the back of the van got around there parked it up behind him left him to it just went for a walk you know looking around trying to find whatever and funny enough whilst i was in sort of the undergrowth i see a few fish sort of cruising around that sort of plateau area i didn't see her but i did see a few of them and i was like well it's looking good like i say it's going to get a bit warmer shallow yeah. water that sort of thing and uh, there's always a chance so you know eventually john sort of packs up and goes and um i've, I've sort of got to swim to myself and uh there's a little bit which you can walk down to the to the where the plateau is and there's a couple of little trees really easy ones to climb not much of a tree climber but you could get up yeah. these ones like you're only sort of you know 10 15 feet up but you can just see enough view. just enough to get a view and what they were doing you could see them they was cruising really tight to the margin in front of the nb where you couldn't really see them unless you was high up but then they was coming into this plateau circling around the plateau and then obviously going over the top of it and bits and pieces i was like right again still hadn't seen her but I see a few fish i thought you know there's a chance like um so i've ended up getting the rod sorted um i think i one up the island margin one on a sort of a known little sort of shallowish area and then i put one bang on top of this plateau which was literally 18 inches of water um a couple of hours has gone i'm walking up and down constantly and i'm climbing this tree oh look they're around they're circling it but i've not had a bite sort of thing and it's like oh you know all of a sudden i've had a beep 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 so i've run back to the rod hit it realized i've hit a liner like you know what i mean like that's it i'm ruining my chances like yeah. i've got to get it back out there blah 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 anyway so what i elected to do in the end was instead of fishing right on top of the plateau from being up that tree and watching them i could see that there was one little bit that they were sort of circling around it had a tiny little bit of like that you know that sort of candy flossy green yeah. type weed you get in the spring which they love in the yeah. spring they, they they get amongst it and it was slightly deeper probably you know a few inches deeper maybe you know maybe it was two foot there um, again with the bait boat <laughs> um, I've ended up putting it back out there but this time I've actually got up this tree and I'm sort of guiding it in with this boat and I've, I've dropped it exactly where I want it like literally at the time I was using um, proper carp baits well I just started using it funny enough that that season and, and, and got on it pretty much amazing and um, the one that I picked at the time was the black seal yeah that's um, that my favorite one yeah probably still is my favorite yeah. of the fish meals yeah. um, and liked it because number one it was a fish meal I loved the blue cheese and the garlic like, flavor that it had in it and I just thought that one would do it for the parrot like an old school sort of bait exactly basically. that I mean we've seen the yeah. old asafoetida and, yeah. and stuff like that which used to go in a lot of that blue cheese baits and stuff like that so yeah that's the one that i ended up going with and um springtime pop-ups for me um pineapple little 12 miller um fished on a pop-up right and um literally to come you know a lot of people sort of know me as putting a bit of bait in a big bait up but for this one it was more snatch and grab tactics do you know fishing what i mean bite, fishing for a bite and if i remember rightly mate i literally got two baits crumbed them up and that's what went in like literally two baits and a little pop-up like and i've ended up getting it on like it's all sort of you can see it all just powdered up around the sort of bait um got it all back in and now i'm like can't sit down can't sit still i'm up and down up and down and i suppose where i was climbing this tree was 
50, 60 yards away from yeah. where my rods were. It wasn't snaggy, you know what I mean? But obviously, it's pretty safe, yeah. yeah, it's pretty safe. But literally, I'd kept walking back to the rods and then like, I'd be, oh, I've got to go and see what's going on. I've got to go and see what's going on. So I'd be back down there up the tree, got my sounder box and stuff like that. Anyway, by the, you know, by the time it got a bit sort of later in the afternoon and the, the old sun had started to disappear behind the trees so the visibility wasn't as good and it was just, just getting the shadows and you just about make stuff out and I thought I see a big carp didn't know what one it was it could have been her it ended up being her yeah. but it could have also been the floppy tail which I had already had and um, so I was up and down this tree up and down this tree and uh, the visibility got so bad where I couldn't see, but I'd still go up there and have a look. And anyway, I was up this tree, and all of a sudden, I've got a beep like that, and I've put the old sounder box out, and like you're looking for the yeah. colour, aren't you? Yeah. Like, and it was the right hand rub one, which was a purple or whatever it was. Like, I was like, oh shit! Like as I thought this, it's just gone beep 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 beep. Like, one and I'm like literally coming down this tree, like I think I pretty much fell down this tree and I'm running through the undergrowth like a madman. Like if you would have been sitting in my swim looking, you'd thought, what the hell is this guy? Anyway, run round, Rod's just literally bowed over. It's not really taking line, but it's bowed, you, you know, you know, yeah. and I'm thinking, pick the rod up and at first it's just like almost solid, but you know, like when you pick up a bit of weed, like, yeah. you know, so going along and I can feel this way I can't feel no kicks on the end and I'm like oh it's done me what a dickhead I've, you know I should have been on the rod I could have got to it quicker it's, it's picked me up it's done me in the way I haven't got a clue what it is but you know I'm thinking I've been done by a carp like so I'm sort of bringing it in and I'm bringing it in and then all of a sudden I can feel a dun, dun, dun. It's like, oh, there's one on here like I've already got the waders on, I'm in the, in the lake, yeah. like, and it's a lot of side strain, like, you, you just pretty much, because the spot or the area was right round to sort of the extreme right, like, you know what I mean? So, bringing it in. Anyway, I must have got it halfway in. I suppose the distance out was maybe, I don't know, 60, 70 yards out that I'm fishing. So I've got it about halfway in. It shook some of this weed off, like, <laughs> and it's like... It wasn't a, a mad carp, but you could just obviously a, a sixty odd pound boat, carp. Yeah. It's got a bit of weight to it, like, and, and you know, if it wants to hold its ground, it's going to hold its ground, sort of thing. And all the time, I haven't got a clue what it is, like, but I'm starting to think, oh, this is this is an heavy carp, like, you know, I'd had that floppy tail, like I said before, and that felt fairly similar because it was a big carp and a bit yeah. of weight to it, like, you know. Um, anyway, I'm playing it in, and it's all a bit uneventful at first. I mean, we have got a video on it, funny enough, so you can sort of see it, do you know what I mean? And uh, sort of playing it, and it's got like it shook this weed off, as I say. And by this time, I've got it quite a bit closer, and I'm now starting to see a shadow yeah, of a car, yeah. like, you know, I'm still not 100% sure what it is, but I'm starting to think, anyway. I've got it a lot closer in and now I can see it. Like I've got the, the Polaroids on and, and all the rest of it. And this car, when you spoke to certain people about it, they would always say to you, it had this tendency of trying to bury its head into the, the silk. Trying to rid the hook. To rid the hook, like, and that's what it was doing. Like, and it was just like that. Every time it pulled, that's what it was doing. It was trying to get its nut down into the into the ground and like shake the hook out. And like, I'm like, oh shit. Like, you know what I mean? And now the old knees are starting to tremble and you know what you've yeah. got, you know, and I've seen it, I've got it a bit close a couple of times, and, you know, I'm sort of re half reaching for the net ready for it, but then it's had a bit of a, you know, a 10, 15 yard run and, and, and all the time I'm just sitting there thinking, please don't fall off, like, please don't fall off, I know what it is now. And um, yeah, eventually it, it's come up and like, it's taken a couple of sort of gulps and, I've just literally gone for it, like, and the net's literally by my hand, yeah. and I've sort of pulled it towards me. I've got it under, and it's like, yeah! Right! Yeah! Georgie boy. Hey. It's the parrot boy. I know it is, it's I saw his head. <sighs> Fucking get in there! 
it's not, it's not me. As you do, but at the same time, even though you know, you know it's it, but you're like, is it, is it, is it? And like, you're looking in there, having a look. Got a reality check. Exactly, and it takes a few times, doesn't yeah. it? You, you have, like I say, you always, you sort of know when, when it's the one you want. But no, I did have to check a few times. Let's just make sure it's definitely, and I ain't mugged myself off big time. Go on. So we are having that barbecue tonight, well, so. yeah, it's the parrot, mate. I know it is, I saw it's it. It's the parrot, boy. Right. Right, come on in. <laughs> right, one more for the camera then. Hey. Yes! <laughs> And it, it was quite good because unbeknown to me at the time my mate Paul he was actually sitting there filming it right? and I, I didn't know so it always works better like, like yeah. that and, and it's to be fair it's nice when you get a little bit of, of footage it's all alright having your photos of the fish and all the rest of it but when you get a bit of footage as well it's it's nice sort of when you watch, watch it, it yeah. I very rarely watch it but when you do it brings it flooding yeah. back like do you yeah. know what I mean So it's more real isn't it than just a sort of like you know, just a plain sort of photo isn't it that's like, it mate you know, yeah yeah basically. yeah you've got the talking in yeah. here and it just like I say it just it just brings it flooding back doesn't it and yeah. to be fair mate it still makes the hairs on the back of my neck stand up you know and it's, Which is what it's it, all it about. was wicked mate yeah not yeah. brilliant capture like and uh yeah what a lake mate um what a lake and you know it was the old celebratory barbecue at the end of it and a bit of a social <laughs> and stuff like that I think I only had one beer not much of a drinker but um and yeah so that that was pretty much it wrapped up mate and, and so how long basically did you fish for that fish so basically like I, say, I think i got on pretty much mid to late october of maybe 2016 right. possibly might be a bit out with them dates but um and then i fished it all the way through the winter so November, December, January, I think it froze, so we had a couple of three weeks off, but still on it in January, February, March, April, and then had it quite early May. So it's really a short campaign then. So six place. month far to be yeah, fair bad, and that's unusual for me mate because I've, I've normally got to you know yeah. grind it out and stuff and, yeah. and it, it normally takes me a while to get amongst the well, sort of bigger ones like, fish in that lake, you've got to play the numbers game that's what you have it, and that's what it was all about and yeah. like I say it was just it's like every big carb capture mate it's, you've got to be in the right place at the right time you know yep you can swing things in your favour, baiting up, blah, 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 blah. But this capture for me, it wasn't off the back of a load of bait or, you know, how I would normally target a, a big fish. Like it was, you know, you know that she loves that area come yeah. springtime, weather's warming up, blah, blah, blah. And like I said earlier, um, it was starting to warm up. So it was, you know, if I wouldn't have gone in there, somebody else would have done and perhaps they would have caught her like you know what i mean so it was just a bit like that but you well, still got to catch them didn't you? To be, yeah. exactly yeah. yeah so that that was brilliant and to be fair um you know it it died not too long after i think i mean not my capture i think it come out once or, yeah. or twice after that i think that one of the young chaps craig ended up having a, a fairly big weight 64 odd pound um, and it didn't last much longer, so it was sort of almost just in the nick of time, do you know what I mean? But, um, and plus obviously I still had Burfield on my mind, like I'd already missed a blind in time on Burfield, you know, they had just reintroduced bait, uh, bait boats on Burfield, yeah. and obviously that's when Scotty Lloyd caught the common, like caught, caught the Burfield yeah. common, so I'd sort of missed out on that. But- That kind of made up for it in a way. I still had that yeah. one, you know, and, Currently, I'm still fishing for the Burfield Common. You know, touch wood, it's still alive and all the rest of it. And who knows? Like, you know. But following on from the parrot, that was quite a, that was quite a sort of um, successful time. Mm. The big fish for you around that period, wasn't it? Because didn't you go to the zoo after that? I did, mate. Yeah. So again, that was just like a spare of the moment decision, to be honest with you. So I'd had this ticket for what we call the zoo, uh, Wingham Fisheries, um, up in Kent. And uh, 
that's got a lot of big carp in it, yeah. you know, um, as you well know, sort of thing. Yeah. Um, I think at the time, the, the big one in there was, uh, probably still is now, Black, a fish called Black yeah. Spot. And uh, literally, I was just sitting there thinking, what am I going to do, what am I going to do? Like, I still had a bit of time left on leave before I had to go back to work because I'd caught the parrot a bit quicker than I thought I was yeah. going to catch it, to be fair. So it was like, do I go back to Burfield? The comments just been out. There's still loads I want to catch, but it was just a little bit of that sort of magic for me had gone. And I thought, right, I know what I'm doing. I'm going to go and have a quick bash on, on Wingham Light. And uh, a couple of mates was up there, Leroy Swan and Tim Pot was over there as well. So I thought, yeah, it's going to have a bit of a social with them as well, like, you know. And um, so literally home, showered and all the rest of it and restock a bait and, and off down to Wingham, like. And uh, it was like, wow. Like, I got down there and it was busy. And Wingham wasn't really known for being busy, but spring, good weather, yeah. you know, everybody elected to do their nights around that time. And... Uh, I think, I can't remember how many swims was on there, mate, you know, 10, 11, 12 swims, whatever it was. And I think most of them were taken, like, and I sort of walked round, walked round, walked into this little bay, and uh, they were just all there, like, just stacked up in these reeds, like, there was a tiny little bay, and there was just fish everywhere. It was like, oh, I can't believe no one's in here, like. So I went and see mate, you know, next door. I said, do you mind if I slip? And he was like, no, mate, you crack on, it's a swim, right? And uh, literally, so two rods, because it was such a, a small bay. Um, instead of a pop-up this time, I went with a little snowman, black yeah. seal, and a white pineapple pop-up, or whatever it was, which, again, proper carp yeah. baits don't do like. And uh, again, funny enough, it was only a sprinkle of bait, you know, 50, 60 odd baits just in the general area. Two rods, one on the mouth and one fished a bit further around like. Um, Tim Pot and, and, uh, and Leroy come round that evening and uh, made me get drunk. <laughs> <laughs> um, the parrot, <laughs> that was the one, mate, yeah. So uh, I think Tim Pot was a little bit worse for wear than me, though, mate. But it was good because I kept my rods out. They came yeah. round to me, you know. And uh, they was there the whole time I was there. And uh, I think that's when Leroy found out that I wasn't the old uh, Folger reel handle type, mate. You know, the old Jippo yeah. type. <laughs> rods everywhere and bank sticks and, and a mess like is normal for me. But... Um, yeah, uh, so whilst they was acting funny enough, that's, that's a funny bit. So while they was with me, like, the, uh, like where Tim Pot was a little bit sort of drunk and that, he was like, kept going on, it's written in the stars, Georgie boy, it's written in the stars, you're going to have black spot in the morning. I like, don't be silly, mate, like, you know, the, I thought I might catch, but yeah, like, not that you know, fish. exactly. And then, yeah, right on cue, mate. First thing the next morning, like literally a few beeps out the sort of rod that was fished to the to the mouth of the bay, and uh, on the way, like, and again another heavy fight, yeah. like, you know what I mean? And like, I think, bloody hell, what's this like, you know? And and it was quite a, a quick affair. It didn't take ages to land, but again, it was it was quite cleared. And where I was not fishing too far out, the chap next door, Daryl, had come running over because he'd heard all the commotion. Like, and uh, I'm sitting there, and it, it's having a go in the deep sort of margins. Like, they're, they're quite deep margins yeah. of wing and like, and you, I can see this thing. It's massive like and to be fair with you it looked bigger than the parrot it wasn't as long but it was certainly a lot fatter didn't have a clue what it was mate i hadn't really studied the carp in yeah. there or anything like that and i'm just thinking shit this looks massive like i hope this don't fall off either <laughs> you know? and uh anyway that all went all right and, and eventually i think daryl netted it for me and um, i'm like Hey, what's that? And he's like, looked at, took one look at him, went, you got a black spot, mate, you got a black spot. And I was like, you're joking, like. And uh, everyone was up round, like they could see me playing yeah. it. And literally, as soon as I've got it in the net, the phone's going, it's Tim Pot, you fucking got it, ain't ya? And I was like, yeah, <laughs> <laughs> I have. And uh, yeah, that, that again. What was the weight of that, John? Uh, 58 and a half. That's two really big fish. Yeah, so we didn't really actually say the weight of the parrot. Yeah. The weight of the parrot was 62 and a half. That's right. it. Yeah, because it was exactly the same weight 
as the Burfield Common, what old Scotty had, the Burfield yeah. Common, and it's like so, yeah, 62 and a half, and then off to well, Wingham, and then 58. Like, how's your That's luck, eh? Hey? Oh, well, a lot of it was luck, mate. Yeah. <laughs> but no, it was good, mate, because like I say, it was. You know, I'd been with Nash baits for years, 20 odd years, and obviously I had a lot of confidence in their bait yeah. at the time. And Sean being a friend of mine, like a good friend of mine, like eventually persuaded me to come over. And as is always the case, when you sort of move over, like to a different company, you're always a bit like, mm, have I made the right decision, yeah. blah, blah, blah. So, you know, to have them two quite early on God using it really. as well it was yeah. like well I think we've got a little bit something special here like with this bait and, and yeah mate um, it's proved itself on it now it so. has proved itself you yeah. know I mean I've used a lot of them now right you know I've, I would probably say the black seal was still my favourite yeah. out of fish mills um, but I've used a nut bait I mean I tend to favour a nut bait for Burfield so I've I would say I'll use a bit more of that on Burfield now, but I like them all, mate. And uh, you know, to have a bit of confidence in in what you use. It's a nice in. consistent bait as well. Exactly like right. It always the same, so. exactly. It looks the same. You know, I mean, you know, we've all been at it a long time, mate. Do you know yeah. what I mean? Bait to a certain extent is bait. There ain't no wonder bait out there. No, it's no yeah. good, yes. um, but to have something that works and like you just said is consistent yeah it's the thing That's isn't it what you look for do you know what it's I mean something less to worry about exactly that watch this space mate who knows that's the luck with the job it's <laughs> like man cheers 62 pound 10 and full some parrotness good boy